Ecologists, when they look at the decimation of whole ecosystem, like a great microcosm of that would be the Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980, when you had about 200 square miles just utterly decimated, turned into a lunar landscape. So this is what happened. You have these pockets of life recovering, and then from those little islands of life, of biological activity, it spreads out. At the rate that it's been recovering, you know, about another, it's been, what, 40 years now since that big eruption. There's now forests encroaching upon the area of devastation. Give it another 50 to 100 years and it should be completely recovered. When we start crater counting to try to understand how many times the Earth has been impacted, we're looking at objects that actually strike the Earth. Do you know how many times the Earth has been struck by some type of a meteor or or a comet. That's what I'm getting at. There's about 200 craters and astrobleams that have been identified on Earth. I just have another question. Sure. Real quick. How are you able to date when an asteroid hits the Earth? Optically stimulated luminescence is probably the main way now that you can date rocks. You can use relative dating if you got layers of soil. Okay. Right. And you go out and you dig a hole. Now you go come back afterwards and you look at that hole and you go, okay, we've cut through this layer, this layer, this layer, but not this layer. So we know it's younger than this layer, right? Got it. You have certain atomic structures that are reset when they're exposed to light. So if you've got a, a crystal that's buried, what's happening is through uh, radiocarbon process, it's decaying and producing byproducts, okay. right? And by measuring the ratio of the precursor material and the byproducts, and you know how long that rate of transition is occurring, you can now get a relative date.